Good morning and welcome to Sunday the 11th of October. The Lord said to Abraham, Go from your country, your people and your father's household, to the land I will show you. I'll make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I'll make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I'll bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. So Abraham went out, as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abraham was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. He took his wife Sarai, his nephew Lot, all the possessions they had accumulated and the people they had acquired in Haran, and they set out for the land of Canaan, and they arrived there. Abraham travelled through the land as far as the site of the great tree of Morah at Sheshem. At that time the Canaanites were in the land. The Lord appeared to Abraham and said, to your offspring I will give this land. So he built an altar there to the Lord, who had appeared to him. From there he went on towards the hills east of Bethel and pitched his tent, with Bethel on the west and I on the east. There he built an altar to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord. Then Abram set out and continued toward the Negev. Hello. Today we're looking at Genesis 12, verses 1 to 9, which has actually great relevance uh, uh, on our understanding, not just of Genesis, but of the whole of the Old Testament. 
You see, when you look at Genesis, in chapters 1 to 11, we have what is known as the primeval story. This deals with creation, uh, the origin of the planet, if you like, and the early de development of the human civilization. It encompasses the fall, Cain and Abel, the flood. And that's all chapters 1 to 11. But now as we come to chapter 12, the focus narrows a little. It comes down and here we are concentrating on God's conversation with Abraham, which affects him and his wife Sarai, or Abraham and Sarah. God says to Abraham, go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land which I will show you. So Abraham went as the Lord told him, it says in verse 4. What Abraham didn't say in today's parlance is, you're all right, mate, I'm staying where I am. I'm 75 years old and settled with my family, so why don't you ask somebody else? He said, as it says in verse 4, Abraham went as the Lord had told him. Now I must admit I'm closing in on age 70 and I'm getting closer to the time when I want to settle and stop. Stop rushing around. I don't really want to start on a journey, especially one where I don't know where I'm going. But verse 4 says, so Abraham went as the Lord had told him. Just like that. Now, when the Lord asked Abraham to start this journey, he also made some promises, promises of blessings. Namely, I will make you a great nation. I will give you this land when you arrive. And I will bless you and make your name great that you might be a blessing. As we've already said, Abraham's 75 years old and probably over a number of those years, promises have been made to him that weren't kept. Yet Abraham went. But you see, these weren't blessings of selfishness or just about blessing Abraham. They're not just for him, not just for his family or his offspring, but for all. And it says, verse 3, And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. This wasn't a selfish journey that Abraham was making. Quite the opposite. But you see, this was a promise from God which was, pure grace. There's no evidence to suggest that Abraham was something special, had done anything to deserve this calling by God in any way. He was just like you and me. There's nothing we have done to be called. It's grace. It is by grace that we're saved and that is the grace of God. Abraham did have perhaps one rare quality in that he was obedient to God's call. Did he know the final destination when he set out? No. Did he say, sorry, I like it here at St Helens, I'm not moving on. Did he say, I just like things the way they are here with my family and in my father's house? No. He was prepared to step out in faith and start that journey. One step at a time, trusting in God. It sounds easy, doesn't it? I know this many years ago and a few stone ago, when I stood on the start line of the London Marathon and later the New York Marathon, the journey ahead seemed a little daunting. But it all seemed to change once I took the first step. So this is the first step in the journey that Abraham and Sarai make. 
a step that will go on to multiply your descendants like the stars of heaven and all this land I have promised I will give to your descendants and they shall inherit it forever. That's Exodus 32, 13. You see, God keeps his promises yesterday, today and forever. So what does that mean for me? What does it mean for us? What example is there for you and me? Wherever we think we are on our life's journey, we're neither too young nor too old to answer God's call. It takes obedience and faith. We're never too old for a new beginning and God will bless us whatever our circumstance. Just look at Sarah, barren before they set out. So, let us be prepared to take that first step as God calls us. Amen. Now next week's talk from Genesis is on faith. And so with Abraham and Sarah as that example, let's hold that in our minds as we prepare for next week's talk. Thank you. Let us by prayer and intercession with thanksgiving make our requests to God. Gracious God, we pray for peace, justice and reconciliation throughout the world. We pray for the honouring of human rights and for the relief of the oppressed. We give thanks for all that is gracious in the lives of men, women and children. We pray for the renewal of the church in faith, love and service. We pray for James and Simon, our bishops, and for the life of this parish and community. We give thanks for the gift of your word 
the grace of the sacraments and the fellowship of your people. We pray for this local community and for all people in their daily life and work. We pray for the young and the elderly, for families and all who are alone. We give thanks for human skill and creativity and all that reveals your loveliness. We pray for those who are in need, for the sick, sorrowful and bereaved. We pray for all who bring comfort, care and healing. We give thanks for human love and friendship and for all that enriches our daily lives. And we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. And we join our prayers together in the words that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Well, thank you for joining me today for our service. Let me finish with an old Celtic blessing. 
May the road rise to meet you. May the sun shine always on your face. May the wind be always at your back and may rains fall gently on your fields. And until we meet again, may God keep you in the hollow of his hands. Amen. So from me to you, take care and God bless.